Um, I actually had troubles with getting our, our browser now to render the SVG graphic. So I'm not going to show you a demo, but this is the type of code that you would want to use in order to draw a rectangle, which is 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Um, kind of a geeky little programming note here. Um, notice that it's 100 by 100. That's a square. But all squares are rectangles. Not all rectangles are squares. Keep that in mind, kids. Super important. All right, so when would we want to use Canvas versus SVG? Um, Canvas is something that we'd want to use for small drawings or drawings with a ton of different objects in them. Like I said earlier that we could use Canvas for creating video games. And so it's really great for, for complex um, things like that, right? Uh, it's good for small screens and then also great for, for real-time data. So if you have like a stock ticker or maybe you're checking out NBA scores, something along those lines or, or maps or weather data, uh, Canvas is absolutely wonderful for that because it'll update in real time. Um, scalable vector graphics, you want to use for larger graphics, which you're not always going to see on a web page. Um, we want to use it for a simple page with less objects in it. And we also want to go ahead and use it for uh, drawings that require a ton of pixels, right? Because it's going to give us a lot of detail. All right. So, now let's go ahead and transition our focus to media and HTML5. So any good web page includes images. It also is going to include video and audio, right? Um, super important. I, uh, I always catch my students trying to sneak a peek at YouTube whenever we're in the classroom. Um, doesn't matter what video it is, they're always trying to access websites that contain media um, or always listening to music. And honestly, I'm the same way too. In fact, I'm in studio right now. I'm pretty sure some folks in here with me are also looking at, at uh, different videos and maybe even listening to music. I don't know. But um, one thing that's really important to note about media in HTML5 is that uh, prior to HTML5, this new standard, um, browsers depended on plugins or media players in order to allow us to, to watch content on screen. But now we can actually just go ahead and embed video and audio onto a web page using the video and audio tags. All right. um, you can embed video in just a very simple way. We use the video tag there at the bottom. We want to go ahead and point to the source. So maybe I have a weird cat video. I'm going to go ahead and define the height and width attributes in order to make sure that the, the video renders properly on screen. Um, otherwise, it'll just render in its, its natural state. Um, and note here, we do use a closing tag for video. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention with the image tag is that the image tag doesn't have a closing tag. And next, let's actually go back to that real fast. Super important, and I can't believe I forgot it. All right, let's take a look at this. So see, note here, we have a forward slash, and that just ends the tag, right? There is no closing tag. There are a couple of other elements that are like that, um, but not very many. So let's go ahead and speed back through this presentation and keep things rolling, all right? Sorry about that, but I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I, if I didn't mention that. Um, there are a couple different attributes that you can use in order to control video, and these also work well for audio too, um, with the exception of poster here. Um, so before my video loads, I can go ahead and show a picture maybe of a cat doing something funny, because that's what people like to look at these days, um, using the poster attribute. I can also make sure that if uh, somebody visits my web page, they, they go ahead and, and see that video playing from the start with the autoplay attribute. Um, controls provides us with the play, pause, and fast forward and rewind buttons that we're all used to. And then loop is going to go ahead and play the video on repeat, right? Um, I don't genuinely, I, I genuinely don't recommend using the autoplay or the loop 
attributes because I think it's really annoying when I don't have control of a video. And it's not just about me, but I think that that typically tends to be the case um, for most users of web pages, right? Like you don't want to visit a website and then go ahead and have maybe like not just one video, but two or three start playing right when you visit. Um, it can be a little annoying. And so you've got to be mindful of, of your users' needs and wants. So keep that in mind, all right? All right, there are a couple of other different video formats. Um, most, <coughs> excuse me, um, most video formats, and actually should say MP4 here, so I'm gonna cross that out. Um, MP4 is used by the majority of browsers, right? It's going to render properly, but not all browsers are going to to support the same video formats. So we do have a couple of others that you can use. Um, one thing that's that's really important here is that you can use the source tag in combination with, um, with its type attribute to point to the file and specify the file type. And now, when we talk about the different video formats, we're not just gonna use MP4, we may wanna go ahead and use multiple different types of formats in order to make sure that our videos render properly on screen. And so that leads me to browser compatibility, right? So not all video formats are compatible with browsers. So we wanna go ahead and use a couple of different source elements here, one for MP4 and then one for the OGG format. Um, these formats haven't appeared a whole lot on, on uh, exams I've taken. I've actually taken the HTML5 app development fundamentals exam two times and I have never seen anything on the OGG format, but you should still know it just in case. Super important stuff. All right, next. And I think just about last year, we're gonna go ahead and touch on audio tags. Um, you can go ahead and, and add audio to a web page with an audio tag and a path that points to the audio file. Um, similarly with video, you can use the autoplay controls and loop attributes in order to perform the same functions, right? So here note that instead of just running controls, I also included a value for the controls attribute, which was just controls. Um, it's probably easier if you just go ahead and use shorthand, okay? Just stick to controls alone as the attribute. Um, there are three primary formats of audio supported, just as with video. You have OGG, MP3, and WAV. Um, once again, not every browser is going to support every audio type, so keep that in mind. Um, we just, once again, use the source attribute to include multiple types here, right? So source is used two times in between the audio tags, so source is nested, and we go ahead and access um, the MP3 and OGG formats that way. All right, so that's the end of our long journey. Go ahead and do a quick recap here. We talked about HTML, how to use basic markup and page structural elements, um, how to use text elements. We displayed some images and talked about Canvas and SVG. And finally, we talked about how to embed media in HTML5. Thanks for joining me. I thought it was a great time, and I hope you did too. See you for the next module. Bye. Welcome back to module three of HTML5 application development fundamentals. I'm Cullen, and we're gonna go ahead and get started right now with building the user interface by using HTML5 with a special focus on organization, input, and form validation. Good times, let's get going. All right, so um, we're gonna talk first about semantic HTML, some new tags used in HTML5. We're gonna talk about how to create tables and lists. Then we're going to focus on input and forms. And finally, form validation, making sure that um, when people input information in forms, it's valid or correct, right? Super important stuff for building web pages. All right, on to semantic HTML. Um, HTML5 has introduced several new elements for organizing content and forms on web pages. Um, we've got some new tags, and you'll see in the image to the right, we've got a, a header tag, a nav tag, which stands for navigation. 
um, a section tag, an article tag for articles like you'd find in a newspaper, and a side, um, sort of like an aside conversation that we may very well have during today's presentation, and then a footer for content like uh, copyrights, uh, published dates, all those kinds of things, right? Um, these tags are all part of semantic markup or semantic HTML. Um, semantic actually just means meaning and uh, doesn't get much more meaningful than that, I guess. Anyway, let's go ahead and, uh, and move on. Let's focus on, on what this looks like, right? So um, the semantic markup ensures that tag names match with the function that a tag performs. So, you know, a footer tag is used to create a footer and so on. And in uh, HTML4, it used to be the case that we would use div tags for everything, and div is just short for division. And so we'd have to um, use the ID attribute um, in order to label what it was, right? So if it was a footer, we'd have to use ID footer. And I'll just go ahead and highlight that here for you. Um, so right here, we'd have to do something like that. Um, notice the difference. Um, up here, there's less typing. Down here, there is more typing. Unfortunately, my writing's not very good, but that does say more, I promise you. All right, so um, let's talk about the div tag and how it would have been used, right? So if you guys recall from last module, um, I had that picture of my dog, Stella, right? Um, the div tag typically requires the use of class or ID attributes. So class and ID are global attributes which can be applied to any HTML element. Um, class is used to identify a group of elements, or like, um, I think of it like a, a class of students. So if you're all in the same class, you'd be like in Mr. White's AP Computer Science class. Um, that would be a class, right? And then an ID would be like your student number or your name, right? Like Morgan, something along those lines. Here in this example, right, notice that this div, I've ident identified it as an about section. Um, and then I have a nested div inside, which is about Stella. And then finally, I've got a slogan right here that says, happy dogs are good dogs. So maybe I'm talking about a business that I'm starting with my dog. Um, she's a dog model, right? You guys saw that last photo, she's awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at, at what this actually looks like. So if you're typing code in an editor, um, in HTML5, it's so much simple, simpler and cleaner than it would have been in HTML4. Um, instead of seeing all those div elements and then having to go through all the different IDs, now you can just go ahead and find a section of code and know exactly what its function is. And that's what's so beautiful about semantic markup. Um, it's really clean, it's really neat, it's really orderly, and it's super easy to read, not just for you, but also for the people who might be reading your code someday. Who knows, there might be some folks that are learning based off of your web pages. Um, so let's talk about all these different structural tags, right? We've got header and footer, which you guys saw last time. We saw nav, we saw section, and then we also saw a side and article. Um, address is another one that you can use. You have details. Then you also have H group, which um, actually groups different headers, like your H1, H2, H3 elements, um, multi-level headings. And finally, you have summary too, right? Which is going to, you know, guess what? Be the place where the summary goes. Um, you know, so it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what these tags are supposed to do. Um, unless, of course, you never read a newspaper article. But that's another video. Anyway, um, header and footer elements. Let's go ahead and take a look at these in action, right? Um, I don't want to spend too much time, so forgive me if I go too fast. I just think that these things are relatively obvious, and you can always download these slides as well to go ahead and review them later. Um, your, your header element is going to define the header, so note it here that it doesn't have to be for 